Wasn't feeling very creative today. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I looked down and I saw a piece of equipment we haven't used around here in a while. And I thought, what else could we test using this guy? Remember what happened last time we used this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> This, if you're not aware, is a compressor. Compress so many errors with this guy. <laughs> All right. Building upon their highly popular H-series cases, the H210i, H510i, H510 Elite, and H710i from NZXT offer a sleek yet functional chassis for PC enthusiasts. Ample interior space and airflow make the H-series the perfect choice for both air cooling as well as water cooling, while the intelligent features offer seamless integrated temperature monitoring and lighting controls. To learn more about the H-series chassis from NZXT for your next build, head to the sponsored link in the description below. So this is just my little 150 PSI small capacity six gallon air compressor that we bought when we were building the sets and we needed a way to do like staples and all that sort of stuff. We recently used it, well I say recently, it's been a while, but we've used it to test how much pressure a water cooling system can hold. Fun fact, if you didn't actually go and watch that video, we pretty much maxed out the compressor right about the point where the soft tubing build, um, the loop that we built exploded. The radiator deformed massively before it blew up. And then we had fun hitting it with a hammer and we turned it into a bow tie, just because. But this was the radiator right here. The end tanks like completely stretched out and it actually started leaking at this rear fitting right here. Um, Cause that's where we had the piece on there to make it, you know, connect to our air tank here. So what we're gonna do today, it's just be super immature and super unsafe. What we are going to do today is highly, highly frowned upon amongst anyone with even a fraction of a working brain. I don't think you should do what we're gonna do. But if you do do it, have fun, and you're on your own, and we're not responsible for any eyes, limbs, or body parts that may end up missing or become maimed and or deformed because of playing around with pressurized air. This is pretty bad. Like, all the way down to accidentally getting an air bubble injected into your bloodstream could happen. Like people like to go <laughs> with the thing on their hand. Yeah, you can literally inject an air bubble into your body and that can kill you. I'm sure some of you now are hoping like, oh God, I hope Jay injects himself with an air bubble. This is actually illegal in many states. If you take this and you turn it into a, like, a, like blow darts or blow guns, like <laughs> they're illegal in many, many states. But that's okay because ours is made of paper. But what I want to show right now is just how ridiculously dangerous this can be. And then we'll get on to how we're planning on testing this. Because I want, what I want to test today is actually scientific. It's not just Jay's being an idiot with an air compressor. No, we are going to be taking a loop. Wow, that's really tight. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. I should cut that down a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to test um, soft tubing versus hard tubing. And then the different types of fittings that there are to clamp down on the hard tubing. Now I'm not gonna use the metal tube, although part of me is like, that'd be funny. No, that would turn into a freaking projectile that would really hurt somebody having a big piece of brass metal go flying across the studio and or hit Phil or my cameras. I could replace cameras. I guess I could replace Phil too if I found an editor <laughs> that's really go good. Way. You're like, I could replace Phil with my cameras. <laughs> no, no, I could replace Phil. There's other, other editors out there. <laughs> But, you know, then I gotta go through all the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, um, but no, there's different types of fittings. And I've talked about how this particular one from um, Alpha Cool has more clamping force. So I figured we could take a couple of different types of rigid tubing fittings and see which holds more pressure before it lets go. Let's see what we got here. There we go. This bad boy's got one, two, three. So as you can see, the way I made this work, not that I'm giving you guys any instructions on how to make any sort of a pro pneumatic projectile ballistic launcher. This is just a pneumatic fitting to a G quarter thread because all the threading on PC stuff is like 99% G quarter and then some G G3 eighths, but that'll work. So this little valve right here, we only had this valve on here. That way we could open and close the um, the, val the valve to let air pressure through when it's all nice and high to make this and be able to shoot spit wads across the room at 200 feet per second. Um, but we don't need that in this case because what I want to do is I'm going to turn the compressor on like we did last time and I'm just going to let it build pressure. Or I guess I could do like last time too where I started with the regulator real low and I just kept upping the regulator. It was scary though. I, I don't think people realize just how scary it was turning that knob. And as the tubes were expanding, and deforming and changing 
shape. They were like <laughs> All right, so we've got one type of fitting here. So this one's from Alpha Cool. It's actually one of my favorite fittings so far for rigid tubing, whether it be metal tubes like this, which need extra bite to grab onto because they're so slippery, they just pop off. And I feel like part of me wants to include this. But anyway, it's the Eisterfin. It's a German product and uh, Sad that I can't even pronounce it. My family was German, but whatever. I digress. Uh, one of the things that makes my favorite fitting too is it's got this built-in hex head into the bottom of the fitting. So if you've ever tried to get one of these unscrewed and you're sitting there like slicing up your fingers as you're trying to undo it and you don't want to use a pliers on it because you don't want to mar up the threads, although damaging these threads and making them ugly wouldn't hurt anything. That just is for the cap, All right? That doesn't hold any sort of liquid, but anyway got this that makes it easier to take off. So this will be subject number one. These are the Primo Chill revolver fittings. So this is a piece of PETG plastic right here. You would put on your cap, you put on your O-ring. This is where the seal actually comes from. Push it down inside that recessed part of the fitting. You can see how there's a taper there. That's where the O-ring sits. So it goes like that and then you tighten it down. So this will be type number two that we're testing. And then last but not least here, we're gonna test Corsair's rigid tubing fittings, which are basically Bits Power. I'm fairly certain that these are Bits Power collaboration with them, um, but in 14 millimeter. And it's, a, well, that makes it one millimeter bigger. But this is actually acrylic. It's 14 millimeter acrylic. This is 13 millimeter PETG. I know some people might be like, but Jay, that's not apples to apples. I, it doesn't matter what the outer diameter is it, it, in terms of bite. It has to do with the mechanism of which it's being bound did by. But for the 13 mil, we'll be testing the friction of just the O-ring from the Primo Chill fitting and then the gasket plus this kind of, a, you see how the, this is almost like a C-clip, if you will. So as it gets tightened down, this gap will close, which will make this kind of a tapered brass fitting bite into the material. You can even see on the metal tube how much it bit into it, there was a mark. Um, so my predictions before we do this, I think the Primo Chill is gonna fail first. Why? Single O-ring. Sure, it's thick and it's gonna squish quite a bit, but it's got a single O-ring holding it. The Corsair, on the other hand, has two O-rings. There's an O-ring inside the fitting, so this is part of what gives it its seal. So it's sealing on the outside and the inside of the O-ring, and that's giving some friction on the tube. Plus, it's got this other O-ring that goes right here that when compressed by the compression fitting, that O-ring also expands. So it will be held on there by two O-rings. And then I predict this guy, if I can get it nice and tight, I feel like it may not let go at all. This one could get dangerous because these are rigid. And have you ever heard those stories about a straw in a tornado went through a light pole? <laughs> I mean, I say in a tornado. <laughs> when I think about Vortec, I think about Tornado. tornadoes. But when I think about Ford, I think about yeah. And then I think at the end of the day, I want to try one of my scraps <laughs> and then just hide. Yeah. <laughs> you know what this is going to sound like when it goes across the room? <laughs> Cutting PETG is so much easier. Because look, you get your favorite cutters and you just, I'll we'll give another link. Keep that. When you try it with acrylic, <laughs> and it cracks. Yeah, so you can't cut acrylic traditionally. And then, and then, that is so not good. It's been a while since I worked with acrylic. Wow. <laughs> Just purely out of coincidence, wearing my very old beat up Performance PCs t-shirt. You can get this stuff I'm showing at Performance PCs. They didn't pay for that. Man, do I love their store. For anyone watching that right now getting triggered because of that condition of hearing that pitch, I have it too. It sucks. Where's my heat gun? Can't say I've ever had to do this before. Oh. You just need the whole thing. <laughs> well, there's a guy that follows me, and I hope he's watching this video. He's a guy who follows me. He's a glass blower by trade, glass worker. And he made glass tubes, but he did the thing where you like squish it together and it makes that bubble. And he did it like perfectly all throughout the tubes. I made a beaker. <laughs> That's such a good science beaker. 
That's forged. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's <laughs> folded forged. Forged PTG. <laughs> I've been watching too much Forged and Fire. Yeah, we got, we got this real Damascus PTG. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm only gonna put these on as tight as I can with my fingers, because that's how like you should be putting it on your PC. You don't need to crank this down, and I think that's one thing we're gonna kind of prove with this video, too, is that you really don't need to go all kinds of crazy with how much pressure uh, you tighten your, your compressions with, because you don't, especially acrylic, you don't want it to crack and you don't realize it's cracked in there. That would be a very bad thing. Yeah, I, I had it wrong. That's what, that's, okay, that was my fault. Cause there is an O-ring that goes between that metal, that, that washer right there, and then this. I'm sure Alphacool was like, what is he doing? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Hey, responsibility's on me. I had to make this video, not had to put together right and be like, look, I didn't hold any pressure then. <laughs> that's my bad. So our N95 mask will protect us in more ways than one today. I feel like I just took this thing hostage and it's like, no, no, let me go. All right, turn the regulator to zero. The regulator's at 30. Oh no, the regulator's at zero. The tank's at 30. Whoa. Yes. That's the Primo Chill one. Yeah, I called it. So somehow I had, I, I, even though I had the regulator backed all the way out, I think because there was no pressure in the tank, there was no pressure to push the regulator like spring back. So it was filling the regulator with air and that's when it blew up the first time. So now the tank is fully pressurized at 150 PSI. I'm gonna slowly turn on the regulator and I made myself a little blast shield. Okay, here we go, we're going to 30. 40. <laughs> What's next, 50? Oh, it's leaking. Ah, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> And, and it started leaking before it exploded, by the way. I heard a tsss, and then it went. So, I'm just gonna crank it now. I'm sure it'll blow up before I get it to 150 PCI in the regulator, but I'm just gonna crank the knob, are you ready? The Primo Chill hung on, but the Corsair let go. Then we don't know what, what DSI is gonna break at. Oh wait! Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's at 50! Approaching 60! It's all blue! <laughs> 70! 80! 85! 90! I don't know where my blast shield is! Stop. <laughs> so it held, it, it, it blew just, just a, above 110. That's ridiculous. Because it was at 110 when I looked back for my blast shield. And, but look at, the, look at the line in it. So it held because of the, that bite, just like I said. There's one more test we have to do. We want to test the metal fitting. And what we've done here is we've created a box to catch it. I predict the amount of force that thing is going to have coming off of it is going to take the box off the table with it, but it will catch the force at least. And then we need to somehow crimp it. Wait, it's brass. Wish I had my press here. Caveman make tools. Caveman make computer. <laughs> so after a lot of caveman make computer hammering, I was able to actually smush it flat and holds the 0 0.02 bar a human lung or whatever can create. All right, here we go. Okay, I don't think this will hold as much pressure, honestly, because it's way too smooth. One of the things that we do when we do metal tubing is we sandpaper the ends. Maybe I'll do one before sandpaper and one after. Man, there's so much science in today's video. So I'm only gonna be able to see this in the replay because I ain't joking around. I'm completely under this table because I refuse to get hit in the face with a piece of brass pipe. I predict at about 60 PSI it will give and then it will hit that Origin PC crate and it will take it off the table. It's 20, 30, 40. That was so disappointing. <laughs> Did it just slowly yeah. slide out? That definitely shows how smooth it is. Let me try that again. This time I'm just gonna crank on it. All right, so clearly metal pipe because of how smooth it, oh, we have to sand it. Remember, that's what we, that's what we always did because that was the problem. In fact, it was, Alpha Cool that was like, we recommend sanding the end. 
so that it has more bite. But don't forget, there's other factors that could cause pressure on a, on a fitting, and that could be poor tubing bends in your, you know, for you, you could have your GPU somehow pulling down on it and sag. And so if you're trying to like, if you put the tube in there all nice and tight and your GPU sagging, you're like, oh, and you push it tight and then you're like, oh, the tubing's holding my GPU up. That's not a good thing. You don't, you also don't want it pushing so hard it's making your GPU sag either. You want the length to be just right to where it's under neutral pressure. It's not being pulled on or pushed. All right, we're starting back at zero. Ready? 80, 90, 100. The regular is maxed. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> I forgot to plug the hose in. All right, here we go. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Oh, it's leaking up there. Uh, it went to all the way to 140 and that's what made the compressor kick on. So yeah, we gained 100 PSI of capability by sanding the end of it. AlphaCool is the clear winner of compression fittings. It was the rad too that survived, right? Oh yeah, nobody expected that AlphaCool radiator to survive the abuse we put it through. And then like the radiator just was like, ding, 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 ding. You hear all the little pieces of metal just expanding. Yeah. Hey AlphaCool, if you want to use any of this in your marketing material, talk to me. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna max out the compressor at 150 PSI. I'm, I'm gonna unplug the tube, the hose, and I'm just gonna plug the hose in with the regulator cranked because I wanna see what happens if sudden shock hits this. All right, here we go, you ready? That's pretty much as long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main time. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna demonstrate why this was dangerous. Three, two, one. Oh, that was super late. <laughs> Did this fall over? <laughs> see what could have happened to your face. I didn't know what else to do today. And I looked down and I saw the compressor and I said, well, I felt like making a big mess, apparently. Why is he yelling at me? Because you're way over there. Okay. Ah. <laughs> All right, I just was bored today and I wanted to make a video. And I know what to make it about. Whenever I'm bored, I like to make experiments. We learned some stuff today. Alpha Cools. <laughs> Alpha Cool Fin fittings. 150 PSI approved. Not really, because it blew up there. So let's say 120 <laughs> PSI approved. Um, honestly, all of these fittings would have done just fine uh, in a loop. They don't, they don't have to hold much pressure. They just have to hold flow, water. Maybe we need to do a test to see how much pressure a system actually builds from when it's room temp to heat it up under load. Because as heat increases, so does pressure because there's an expansion of fluids as they get hot. It's the reason why the radiator cap on your car is like, do not open when hot, because we've all seen what happens when people do that. Uh. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on some stupid science we could do. Science? Science we could do. Put it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.